Today we've got a nice number theory problem from the USA Math Olympiad. And I think it, you'll see that it involves a really important theorem for math contests, but let's maybe discover the need for that theorem instead of stating it right away. Okay, so our goal is to answer the following question, and that is, do there exist 21 consecutive positive integers such that each one is divisible by a prime less than 17. So that means that every number on this list is divisible by either 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, or 13. Okay, so let's maybe think of how this might go. Well, I want to be motivated by this idea of trying to work symmetry into the situation, and the way I'll do that is start by picking the number that's in the middle of this list. But if we call perhaps the number in the middle of this list x, then we can work forward and backward until we have 21 total numbers. And so what would that look like? Well, forward we would have x plus 1, x plus 2, x plus 3, x plus 4, x plus 5, x plus 6, and then of course like x plus 7, 8, 9, and 10. And then if we were to work backwards, well, we would have essentially the same kind of thing. So x minus 1, and then we've got x minus 2, <coughs> and then we have x minus 2, x minus 3, x minus 4, x minus 5, x minus 6, and then let's see, x minus 7, x minus 8, x minus 9, and x minus 10. And now I'd like to observe that a bunch of these numbers are even. I think that's pretty clear. Every other number here is even. Every third number is a multiple of 3. Every fifth number is a multiple of 5. Every seventh multiple is a number of 7, and so on and so forth. But that means that if we have x being even, then we can know exactly which ones are even. And maybe let's use this underlining in green to just point out which ones of these numbers are even. In other words, which ones of these numbers are automatically divisible by 2. Okay, so that would be x. That's x plus 2 x plus 4, x plus 6, x plus 8, and x plus 10. And then we can work backwards as well. So x minus 2, x minus 4, x minus 6, x minus 8, and x minus 10. Those numbers are all even. So now we've just got to argue that x plus an odd number is going to be necessarily divisible by one of these, or maybe prove that it's impossible for this to occur. But we're not quite at the point of getting an idea of what would it take to show that this is possible or impossible yet. But now perhaps let's work on multiples of three. In other words, we will underline everything that's divisible by three in this peach color. But in fact, we don't really know where to start because we don't know if x is divisible by 3, or maybe it's x plus 1, or maybe it's x plus 2. Well, maybe just to keep things going nicely, let's assume that x is also divisible by 3. So that means that, well, also x plus 3 is divisible by 3, x plus 6 is, and x plus 9 is. And then we can work backwards as well. So x minus 3, x minus 6, and x minus 9. And now let's look at which ones remain, which ones that we don't automatically know are divisible by a certain number. Let's observe that x minus 5, x minus 7, x plus 5, and x plus 7 are also not necessarily divisible by anything. Same thing goes for x plus 1 and x minus 1. Now, let's maybe take the lowest hanging fruit first, and let's observe that if x is divisible by both 5 and 7, then we can clear up x minus 5, that'll be divisible by 5, 
so will x plus 5, and we can similarly clear up the divisibility of x plus and minus 7. So let's color code that as well. So let's perhaps use this blue underline for divisibility by 5, and we'll use this red underline for divisibility by 7. So let's see, like I said, x minus 5 and, well, x minus 10, but we've already taken care of that. Those are both divisible by 5 because now we're also assuming that x is divisible by 5. Same thing with x plus 5 and x plus 10. And then likewise, since we're assuming that x is divisible by 7, so is x minus 7 and x plus 7. Okay, great. So let's see, well, pretty much what we have seen so far. So making this sort of assumption that x is divisible by all of these numbers, which actually implies that x is divisible by their product because these are all primes. So if x is divisible by 210, then x plus minus 2, x plus minus 3, x plus minus 4, x plus minus, well, everything up to 10 are all divisible by a prime less than 17. So that really just leads us to the following question. And I think that question would be, what about the remaining two numbers, x plus 1 and x minus 1? So, well, we've taken care of everything else. Everything except for x plus 1 and x minus 1 is necessarily divisible by a prime less than 17. But let's observe that we haven't had any of them divisible by 11 or 13. So here's what we'd like. So we would like x plus 1 to be divisible by perhaps 11, and then x minus 1 divisible by 13. And then, well, we would be totally done because we would have, well, let's see, this x minus 1, like I said, would be divisible by 13. And then this x plus 1, if we could construct this whole setup, would be divisible by 11. But then everything on our list would be divisible by some sort of prime less than 17. Okay, so, well, let's maybe go ahead and underline exactly what we need to occur. We need x to be divisible by 210. We need x plus 1 to be divisible by 11. And we need x minus 1 to be divisible by 13. But if we exchange all of this, for the language of congruence, let's observe that in fact what we need is the following. We need x to be congruent to 0 modulo 210. We need x to be congruent to, let's see, it'll be minus 1 mod 11 because x plus 1 is divisible by 11, so that means x is congruent to negative 1 mod 11. And then x also has to be congruent to 1 modulo 13. So we either have to find an x that satisfies this system of congruence or congruences or argue that it exists. But in fact, this type of uh, solution is guaranteed to exist by the Chinese remainder theorem. So let's maybe put that theorem over here on the board so we recall what it is. And then we'll discuss how uh, we're actually finished with this whole thing. So Chinese remainder theorem says that if you've got the GCD of this set of numbers n1, n2, up to nm being 1, then there is a solution to the following system of congruences. We have x congruent to a1 mod n1, x is also congruent to a2 mod n2, all the way down, x is congruent to am mod nm. So we're guaranteed for this solution to exist by this theorem. And in fact, we also know that this solution is unique modulo the product of n1 to nm. So let's maybe talk through exactly how we can finish this thing off. Well, actually this thing is finished off, but how you would write it up carefully. 
So you would say, by the Chinese remainder theorem, let's choose an x that's congruent to 0 mod 210, it's congruent to negative 1 mod 11, it's congruent to 1 mod 13. And I guess you would need to argue that x minus 10 is a positive integer in this case, but I think that's pretty clear because if x is congruent to 0 mod 210, well, 0 doesn't work as a solution, so that means that x is at least 210. But if x is at least 210, then x minus 10 is always positive. Okay, so anyway, we've got an x satisfying these three congruences. But then by the argument outlined in our exploration, we know that x plus 2, x plus 3, x minus 2, x minus 3, all the way up, x plus minus 10 are divisible by primes, well in this case, less than or equal to 7. And then by the choice of these last two congruences, we know that x plus 1 and x minus 1 are divisible by 11 and 13 respectively. And that finishes everything off. Now, you might not be super satisfied with the solution because often, instead of just proving something exists, you'd like to actually know not only that it exists, but you'd like to have an actual list of numbers that creates this situation. And if you'd like that, well, then you can do the maybe computational part of, of the Chinese remainder theorem, which is outlined in the proof of the theorem, to actually find this value of x. I'll, you know, tell you though that this value of x is equal to, let's see, 20,580. So that's the value of x that satisfies these three congruences. And that's the smallest value of x. It's the one that's unique mod 210 times 11 times 13. Furthermore, we can use this value of x to build out this entire list. Notice that x minus 10 will be 20,570, and then we'll need to go all the way up to x plus 10, which is 20,590. And that would be our explicit list of 21 positive integers, each of which is divisible by a prime less than 17. And that's a good place to stop.